So the fact that I can see this on this page right here when I browse it directly tells me that not only have I connected to the host, but I've also selected a database that actually exists. And this link is good here because I did the same check with my database select. Okay, so for example, uh, just to show you, if I were to take this password and I were to get rid of it and I were to type in, oops, okay, and we save that and we go back to this page and we refresh it. Now you can see I get an error. It says access denied for the user. And the reason is, is because this password is incorrect. Okay, that's not the password. So uh, you have to get all this information right. If I, again, mess this up and I save that and I come back over, see I get a, a, a error that says that it's access denied for this user because that user doesn't actually exist. I just made it up. Okay, so uh, you're going to get errors if you're not connecting correctly. And this is how you can, these checks in here allow you to do that. And then you put in this at the end of all that to ensure that if all that information is correct, you get some feedback that tells you you're connected successfully. Okay, because again, that wouldn't show up. You would get an error. Okay, so now we know that we're connected to the host, uh, we've selected the database, now is where we can start working with data and that's where we're going to uh, create our SQL statements. And again, we're going to do that based off of the, the form with the data that gets uh, inserted and also our database here and the fields and the table that we need to work with. So to actually store information into our database, we're going to again create uh, an SQL statement. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create this uh, line of code here. And what this does is, as we mentioned in with the form, this form is going to pass via the post method the information submitted in this form to this demo page. Well, we have to retrieve that information, and this is how we do it. We use this line right here which is post now if you would use the get method you would type get here instead we we'll use the post method so you're going to use post and then we're going to use it's, it's essentially a named array where this is the um, the you retrieve uh, this information based off the form name or the input name so meant remember this 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 input was named input one so we use this post input one. If we had named this input two, we would have to put input two here. And so for every um, for every element that you put in your form, you have to come over here and you have to create and store that value into a variable so that you can then use it to store it into the database, okay? You don't actually have to do that. You can actually just use this directly, but um, I like to store it into a variable, so it's a little, little bit easier to work with a variable than it is with this long code right here. So it's really up to you on that one. So once you've done that, now we can go ahead and start to insert that information into the database. So we're going to create a SQL statement, and again, we want to store it into a variable so we can test it. So we're going to go with SQL equals, and then these are my SQL commands okay so one of those is insert so we want to insert you want to insert into and what we place here what we want to insert it to is into the table so we connected to the host we connected to the database now we're specifying what table we want to insert this information into okay so if we go back to our site you can see that our table that we're using is demo and so that's why in our code we specified demo all right, so now we want to specify, we've specified the table, now we want to specify what field, okay? And again, it's input one. If we come back over here, we can see we have our input one. Uh, this ID field will be automatically generated. That's why we went with this auto increment, so it'll automatically generate it, and you'll see that here in just a sec once we do some form submissions. But this is our input one field, so we've said we want to insert into this table, into this field, and now we're going to declare the values. Okay, so we write values so it knows that we're declaring those values. And then we use our 
variable from up here and declare that that's the variable that we want to put in to the database. So what's going to happen is when we submit this form, the information that gets put into that text box is going to be passed to this page. It's then going to be uh, PHP is going to retrieve that value, store it in this variable, and then we're going to use that to place it into this statement and put it into um, the database. Okay, and then of course we want to test to make sure we have a valued valid statement. So we're going to put in this error check. Um, oops, here. We're going to put in this error check. So. Um, this is we want to do um, an actual uh, query here so you, you this creates the statement then you have to actually create the the query uh, to put it into the data into the uh, database so um, that's what this is and then we did an error check um, where you know we're checking to see if it actually connects and puts the information in if it doesn't it's going to return us this error and tell us what the error is so we can fix it okay so if we save that then we're going to now we've got what we need in order to um, store this information into the database so if we head back over here and we go to our form and we input some information let's say Okay, we hit submit. Okay, nothing happens because we haven't put any feedback in there. You can see we're on our demo page. So we got, remember the form action sends us to this demo, which is actually our script now. Okay, and we haven't put in anything to show us that it was successful. But if we head over here to our database, you can see that the information got stored into the database. And so if we come back over here, and just add some more 